Okay, so on to our final speaker of the night, um, which is Danielle McKernan. Uh, Danielle is a teacher at St. Patrick's Academy in Dungannon and a Google accredited trainer and coach. So Danielle is going to talk about what uh, coaching is and how it can be used in schools. So Danielle, are you there? Lovely. Hello. There we go. Thank you very much for the invitation to speak today. Um, my name is Danielle McKernan and I'm part of the senior leadership team in St. Patrick's Academy in Dungannon. And just get my presentation going. Um, and I have had the great pleasure of working before with some of the speakers on the call here. So I've worked with Dr. Emma Kell um, previously on a coaching project and I've also worked with Alistair Hamill as well. So it's been great to meet up with those people again. Um, so today what I'd like to talk to you about is this concept of coaching and how coaching has been really beneficial to us in our school and the insights that I've gained this year about it. So um, I'm a Google certified trainer and today I'm going to talk about the Google certified coach and how that has now led us on to think um, a bit more about how coaching can be used more widely, not just for implementing technology, but also for a range of other instructional uses within our school. So the little graphic that I've chosen there is really related to how we understand coaching and what it is like. So coaching for us is really setting everybody off so that they can be self-reliant, that it builds capacity within the individual so that they can help themselves to grow in confidence and also to grow in their own skills. So down at the bottom, there's also a little quote to lead us into the nature of this presentation that I'm going to talk about today. So it says, a great coach can lead you to a place where you don't need him or her anymore. And really, that's nearly what it's like for me as the digital learning lead in our school. I'm almost making myself redundant. I'm giving everybody the capacity to be able to solve their own problems. And with that, I'm almost... Um, kind of putting myself out of a role because then the other people can then lead themselves and having other people within the school step up and almost be the learning leaders as well. So distributing that leadership throughout the whole school. So when we hear the term coach, we probably think, well, what is a coach? And we maybe have some preconceptions on what coaching means. So there's a number of terms that I suppose are slightly aligned with coaching. Um, so, for example, counselling is not the same as coaching. So counselling is a um, field in itself, helping you deal with your, your feelings and to work through those. So that's not really coaching. Teaching, we're all familiar with teachers ourselves. Um, a lot of the times teaching is really, you know, the giver of knowledge. And I know we don't want to be the sage on the stage, but um, generally it is it's the, the teacher is the person who has the knowledge and can help develop the people with the knowledge. Mentors, we think of mentors really as people that you can go to who have experience and we're going to get a shortcut by going to their experience and uh, learning from the experiences that they have already gone through and learned the hard way. And by speaking to a mentor, we can sometimes benefit ourselves without always having to go down that long trodden route that they had to go down. Trainer then is getting close to what a coach is. So the trainer is really the person who is delivering the information. But one of the issues with training is that very often it's wholesale. Everybody is listening to the same material. Very often it's not differentiated. So we can often feel if we were getting continued professional development as a training session, that this is something that's being done to us. It's something that we didn't have any choice in, that we kind of have to endure. And then often there becomes an issue whenever that training that you have learned has to be implemented. Um, we're, we're not sure if we're effectively implementing it. We can sometimes feel overwhelmed if it's a very new strategy. So that's where coaching comes in. And coaching is basically taking the ideas that you've perhaps learned in training and taking you and walking alongside you to help you develop those different strategies. And that's really what the focus is today, the idea of coaching. So during the pandemic, as the digital learning lead in our school, I really um, 
was the trainer. You know, um, all of the staff needed to upskill and upskill so quickly. So I went off then and I thought, well, I'm doing all of these things anyway. I may as well get the certification to be a certified trainer um, because I had everything together to do that. And while I was doing the, the training programme, what I noticed then was that Google also had this other programme called the Coaching Programme. So I looked at that as well. And while I was training staff, I mean, we would all do this ourselves. Once you deliver training, um, somebody, people will come back to you. This, your colleagues will come back and ask you for follow up support, ask you for follow up advice. Um, and, you, you know, you will give that individualized support. So I thought I was being a coach as well. I thought this individualized support was coaching. But when I delve closer into the coaching program, I realized that I had a lot to learn. So some of the insights that I gained are as follows. So the coaching program is an actual model and it is useful to have a framework to work through. So it starts off with this idea of identify. So this coaching model then, it's based on research. It's a five step model. Um, it's challenged based as in you um, you set a challenge, you set a goal and you know it's not just platitudes because sometimes while we feel overwhelmed and we want support with something and um, platitudes aren't enough we do actually need practical advice to help us get over whatever the issue is that we're dealing with so this is what this model does it sets out this framework so it goes through then starting with identify so the first stage in identify is helping the person to identify exactly what the need is so what I do then in school is at the minute, this is our most recent um, example of it, is set out at the start of the year after we've been trained in um, a little form. So a Google form, for example, to ask, you know, how is everything going? And within this form, uh, staff are very honest. They're able to feel open and able to say what the challenges are they're facing. And they know that I'm, I'm happy to take on board anything that's not going well. I don't feel offended by that. That's a challenge that together as a school we'll want to overcome. So I'm happy to hear about things that aren't going well. I'm happy to hear that for ha perhaps somebody's working on something different that's not in maybe our school development plan, that they're working on something that's personal to them because it is a real stressor for them. So all of that information comes through to me. Now, the, the key issue, as we all know, in schools is time. We just don't have time to do all of these things. So... um. While coaching is mainly an individualised activity, what I will have to do in school is um, group coaching. So, for example, I look down through the results of this Google form and I will see well, who is having similar issues. And then we'll team up and we will we'll make a point of meeting together and overcoming the challenges together. And that idea of group coaching works really well. Um, it, it means that you're in a community. You're not on your own. There's other people there and that you can bounce off, that you can share ideas of that. It's not just you. This is one of my favorite tools that in the identify stage of the Google Pro Coach program I learned about. And I mean, if I hadn't have gone down the route of looking more deeply in that coach program, I wouldn't have known about all of these tools to help support me. And um, so this tool is called the Great Jam and it is so effective. I mean, there's times where um, we walk into school and we just feel that there are so many issues playing on our mind that we just can't think clearly. We just don't know where to start. We don't know what the most pertinent issue is. So this is called a Grape Jam. And the way the Grape Jam works in this program is you can see along the bottom that little scale, what's the most frustrating issue right through to what's least, less frustrating and then the number of people affected up on the other axis. And what this does is it really helps when I'm working with colleagues for them to gain perspective. Um, we would use Google Jamboard to do this. I've also used just manual paper post-it notes. And what we do is we get the conversation started and we say, well, what are the issues that really are causing you the most stress? What are the issues that you feel that um, are making you feel a sense of, um, you know, un be making you feel uncomfortable in the day to day in your classroom? What are the things where you think, you know, you don't feel confident? I mean, we all are. All, all, all teachers are confident, but sometimes you feel in yourself, you know, I've lost my expertise. Um, so these approaches, 
really help the teacher to communicate the issues and they help us then identify and focus in on one thing, just one strategy to work on firstly. And then once we work on one thing, then we can pick, pick, fix something else or look at something else to develop that further. So this little great jam is a wonderful tool, so simple. And when you go away, you feel, you feel better after you've got it all out because sometimes it's just nice to be able to structure your thoughts and put it all down. So the next stage then in the model is investigate. So investigate is really where the learning comes in. It's where the person who's a coach in the school really has to have a good sound over, overview of pedagogy. They need to have a broad understanding of lots of different principles, lots of different um, pieces of research to be able to bring that to the table whenever they're helping to find solutions. So there's lots of coaching programs out there and there's coaching programs in business as well. And many of those programs really don't make suggestions. They, they force you to basically think and reflect through questioning. But in these coaching programs and in these instructional coaching programs, they do offer some strategies and suggestions. So really the investigate stage would be offer nearly a menu of options that might help the teacher to overcome the problem. So an example, you think um, in school, for example, there was a member of staff who was really frustrated recently saying that they were putting on a live stream of their class. There's a child at home self-isolating. They were putting the live stream on and the child wasn't joining in the class. And really in our school for sustainable workloads, we, we advocate the approach of using the high flex approach whereby the class is streamed because it means then that the, the child at home is gaining real-time access to the learning. They're able to ask questions in the moment um, and the teacher is able to check their understanding as well in the moment. But Whenever the child wasn't joining the lesson, it was really creating the stress in the teacher's mind. They knew that the child was potentially falling behind. They were worried about what was happening. So in the investigate stage, then we did our little grape jam. We talked about it. And then what we said was, well, what are practical strategies to help reduce this stress, to help to, 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 to try to manage the situation? So what we came up with then was recording the Google Meet lesson. But then um, we, with some good question, and then basically looked at the situation of putting on a lesson that's one hour long, that the child wasn't really an active participant in at the time, and making them watch that as a video. And whenever I ask some questions and always asking open questions is the key in coaching. And I ask questions like, well, like how impactful do you think it'll be for learning if the child is watching this video that's an hour long? And then the teacher is able to think, well, do you know, I don't think they would be engaged in that lesson if it's going to, you know, go on that long and there's perhaps some gaps while there's thinking time or um, pupils were writing things down and you know it doesn't flow in the same way so what then we decided was that the teacher then said well you know what about if I chunk it up and then we thought about the pedagogy of that and together so it's this idea of together you're working on the solutions talking it through together we said well you know that would be a better solution chunking up the lesson because that would help with cognitive load theory as well and then the people will be able to when they're doing their catch up later look at the lesson follow the lesson and it means as well then that the teacher still has the benefits of the sustainable workload because the teacher doesn't need to put additional material up or make lessons outside of their own um, class time to be able to support this people working at home so it really is that idea of What's an, what's an issue, what's a challenge we're facing, and then working together to find solutions to that. Moving on around the model, you can see there's different stages, the select, the implement, the reflect. All of those, it's really about um, meeting, visiting, meeting, visiting, coming back, reflecting on it, asking open questions and saying, you know, how can we improve? What's next? What's the next stage? So within everything that we do in coaching, the key is always about relationships. So the first thing is listening and active listening. I found that whenever I was speaking to colleagues and I just really learned this about myself whenever I delve more into coaching models that very often I would ask a question and nearly answer it for the person straight after. So I learned to slow down. And had I not investigated the Google Coach program, 
I wouldn't have really learned that about myself. So it was definitely worthwhile doing that. Again, the types of questions we ask, questioning, open questions. How might we, um, instead of using things like why, as soon as you ask a question, somebody a why question, why did you not? Why didn't you? The back gets up, everybody, you know, the person's back gets up, they go on the defensive and it's not open and thought provoking. We must build rapport. Um, whenever we're coaches, we we, we have you know, somebody's making themselves really vulnerable in front of us. We have to respect the person and respect the dignity of the person in the moment when they're talking to us about their challenges. It's really important to build that sense of rapport, to empathise with the person, to always assume best intentions, to to listen to the person, but know that underneath the stresses and the frustrations is at the heart of it all their core values to look after the child that's in their care in their classroom so we always should be empathetic to the people that the colleagues that we're working with whenever we're speaking we should summarize and reflect back to the teacher their comments so for example we would mirror um we're like a mirror to the person whenever we're coaching we they will um, speak and then we show our active listening by reflecting back to them what they've said and summarizing it and when somebody actively listens to you it makes you feel so good you feel listened to heard valued and all of that makes you feel like your you know your well-being is being respected because you're actually being heard and this technique of reflecting back and summarizing what somebody says to you your colleague says to you shows that you are interested in supporting them and that you care about them and what they're experiencing. The idea of unlocking then, number six, the limiting beliefs. You know, a lot of our staff, particularly with technology, would put their hands up and say, um, you know, oh, I don't feel comfortable with this. I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone entirely. You know, everything that I normally do isn't working anymore. And really it's about building that confidence and helping them to see you are making a difference. Look at how far you've come and building up their confidence again. So staying focused very often um, when we're doing, say, a grape jam there and working out what the strategies are, it can be tempting to run away with ourselves and want to do too much too early. So it's so important to incrementally build on the growth. And that's what we do. We pick one thing, get it working, and then after that, lead on to something else. Whenever we're coaching and we're working with staff, we, it's so important to not be judgmental. This is a non-evaluative process. Now, I'm coming into a class and as a member of the senior leadership team, you know, you would think, oh, they're, they're coming in to judge me. But I don't come in with forms. Even if you ask some of the colleagues in school, the, if I'm talking to them and working with them in a coaching capacity, they probably don't even realize they're being coached because it just really is that idea of helping people out, helping each other out. Um, I don't walk around with a big sign saying I'm coming today to coach you. It just really is mostly informal and saying, how can I help? Uh, what's, what are you, what's your challenges at the minute? And just listening and then going from there. Uh, the idea of giving constructive feedback, number nine there. I mean, again, this, this has to have actual solutions. There has to be practical solutions where the person can feel they've moved on have improved. Coaching is a developmental model. Staff have to feel that they're getting better and that sense of getting better really builds confidence. The final one, number 10, is something again that I was so guilty of. I mean, if someone came to me with a problem, I wanted to fix it. I was superwoman. I'll run in and I'll give you all the solutions. Do A, B and C, job done and away we go. But what I've realised through learning more about coaching is the fact that that's not building capacity in the person. It's not helping them to develop the sense of self-reliance. So while it is so tempting to just get straight to the answer, you can't do that. I need to use questioning to help the person draw out the answer within themselves. So it's really that idea of forcing the reflection with the person through active open questioning. And really whenever someone has to think about it themselves a bit more, it makes it stick, just like in the classroom. It just it makes it stick that bit more. So when they encounter a similar problem again, they're able to then use all of those learned strategies to basically approach the situation and be able to be self-reliant. 
So again, this is the big model and um, from the Google coaching program, and there's lots of models out there. You could go off and research some others. There's the grow model if you research that. And um, basically the Google model is based on a book by Jenny McGuire's and it's called Courageous Adventures. So if you want to do a bit of reading, it's a great book that will help you kind of look at all of these techniques and tools. And just like I have done really, I suppose, make them fit the context within your school. So pick out what works best in them. So to finish up and conclude, um, just look at this little quote that struck me and it says that a coach is someone who tells you what you didn't want to hear and who, ha who has you see what you don't want to see so that you can be who you have always known you could be. And that's really the idea of coaching. When you've been coached, you feel stronger, you feel more capable of meeting any challenges that you face, you um, can feel like you can go further, you feel like you can handle anything. And while coaching can be challenging at the time because it's effort, um, for schools it's a bit slower to do, um, it's definitely worthwhile in the end and I highly recommend it. So if you'd like to connect with me to talk more about coaching, my favorite subject, um, please do get in touch with me. And you can find me on Twitter. Um, and my handle is at Academy Danielle. And I would love to talk more about it if you're interested. Thank you. That's great, Danielle. Thank you very much.